Hi everybody, my name is Shalva. We were born in, in music, in Georgian folk music and city music. And I also have to thank my mother uh, for that, uh, because uh, age of four, uh, she taught me how to play uh, panduri, which is the three string instrument. Uh, and um, she taught me how to sing um, one of the uh, songs of Hamlet Gonashvili, <laughs> one of my favorite ones. Um, I don't know what kind of job I did then, but uh, music kind of became a big part of um, my personality too. Where it drove me into Canada, and then I also found my um, another half that I share my wonderful life with, and I'm thankful for that. And that's because of music. There you go. My name is Andrea, and I became interested in Georgian polyphony when I decided to be interested in music. I thought jazz was my passion, and uh, I discovered a Georgian choir in Toronto, and I thought I would explore my voice singing with this Georgian choir, but uh, I really understood Georgian music and really fell for it when I went to Georgia for my first time and experienced it at the table in context of toasts and love. And, uh, and then I found my love through Georgian music. I wished it and I was sent this man. Me? <laughs> <laughs> and it's just been a big epic history of me and Georgian music. I started doing graduate work, masters, PhD, um, studying the music, I teach my kids, we teach workshops, on and on it goes. Nura persimetroi mi mahere, Roma da michte, dana siari. Nura persimetroi mi mahere, my name is Diana. I was born in Georgia, where everybody sings and since I remember myself, I hear Georgian polyphonic songs and also in my family, I remember Supra. Supra is a Georgian feast. So my mother always had very interesting guests, musicians, movie directors, actors, and it was so interesting listening to them and this heartwarming toasts uh, followed by poems and beautiful songs. So I grew up with that. So it's thanks to my mother. <laughs> and since uh, I remember myself, I sing with my sister. We have a vocal duet and we sing uh, very uh, synchronized because more almost uh, half a century we sing together. So it's, yeah, yes, yes, yeah. So she lives in New York, but we often have concerts here in Toronto and this is, yeah, I was born there, so this is, was my, since I was born, I hear this beautiful music. Let's 
My name is Alisha. I became interested in Georgian culture and music, specifically music, uh, when I met uh, my future wife, Diana, uh, in New York. Uh, so uh, the first time uh, you know, I listened, uh, she performed with her sister. It was a Georgian duet. And uh, I fell in love with that. And since then, I kind of slowly, slowly uh, evolved into uh, more listening to polyphonic folklore stuff. We moved in to uh, Canada in 2004 uh, from New York. Yeah, the reason we chose Toronto because Diana had relatives here, uh, her aunt. And think, also so. this tragic events of September 11. Right. We did not feel safe there. And we decided to move. Uh, my husband, he applied as a skilled worker and we received in a few months, we received permanent residency and we moved. So it was the right decision to move here because, yeah. It was very different for me uh, to leave uh, a country that you spent 21 years uh, that culture and absolutely move to somewhere else where um, people are so different. Um, I can't say that it was cold and warmth. I, I was really lost, you know, like all of us, uh, because it was a language barrier. We had no friends. You know, before we um, uh, turned around, uh, per se, you know, to, to, to see what was going on, uh, uh, one of our friends um, um, introduced us to choir Darbazi. It's the same people that um, Alisher and Diana talked about. Yep. Uh, good singers, Canadian people, very good hearted. They, they stood beside us. They, they made me feel so warm and welcome in this country that uh, I, think th I think those were people who, who made me to love this country. You know what I mean? Then, then I saw everything in a different way. You know, Georgian will always will be with me, but, but I don't live in Georgia today, I live here. And I took all the goodness that this country can offer. As I said, I started uh, singing with my sister since I remember myself, but Georgian polyphonic songs uh, after I met my husband, and he's a big fan of uh, uh, Georgian polyphony music. And then when we had kids, uh, we just a few years ago, we formed a group Alilo, and we started learning more folk songs with help of our friend, <laughs> friends yeah, yeah. Bachi and Andrea, yes. But before I was singing more gypsy songs, uh, chanson style, uh, style romances and urban, Beautiful. and uh, city urban Beautiful. songs nice. with my sister. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, now we moved towards more because of mm -hmm. kids, I want them to just yeah, so know. That's yes. how I, when I met her in New York, she was mostly singing uh, city style, chanson style, uh, Georgian songs, and uh, when I um, kind of became close with the Diana's mom, she introduced me to her friends who uh, who would basically take me to their concert where they would sing a uh, Georgian song, like the f folklore song, uh, mostly like, um, you know, the mountain region, like Hefsureti, uh, Tusheti, and so that's how I fell in love with it. I'm 
How did it change, Georgian music? Georgian music has changed? Oh yes, it has to. Otherwise it'll be dead, you know what I mean? And it changes in a way to me, uh, to my, um, my, my heart and my, my cells that make me so happy when, when I sing with family and friends, is um, you change it. You, you, you make the change, you know? Like, Diana and Alisher's family sing One Mraval Jamir, which there's hundreds of versions, but it makes their own because the way they sing, the way they approach the notes. It's not about the notes, it's about they're listening to each other and try to complement one another, you know, singing-wise. But it hasn't changed dramatically as lots of other music has. It always stayed unique, it really did, and that's the beauty of it because it doesn't change so much, but it changes so much in the same time. With like one song, Logayeleta, let's say, many years, right? Ukrainians have it, Russians have it, Georgians have it, maybe other ones have it too. But it always sounds different when you sing that one song, it depends, it, it, at the table you sing it, you're in a certain mood and it's gonna sound that way. And then you're somewhere else and you sing the same song and it will definitely sound different. You sing it with the different people and that's so beautiful and rich that we can't talk about this forever. It's a complicated history of traditional music being appropriated for the stage <clears throat> and then being trying to be packaged into something that doesn't have the essence and the spirit of the music, but that spirit stayed alive in family settings. Even when it was repressed by Soviet, the Soviet power, because it wasn't, you know, this was a conflict with, with power. I mean, music is such a strong force. Yes. If it's not with the, the government, then it could be a conflict. Um, but it stayed alive in small ensembles. It stayed alive around the table with families. And, it, and, and in the 80s, there was a big resurgence. <laughs> Urban uh, uh, city songs, uh, probably from 19th century. Oh, yes, yes, because the T Tbilisi, Tiflis yes. was cultural center. Mm -hmm. And from the 19th century, uh, this uh, urban city songs uh, yeah. becoming popular, yes. Tbilisi and Imereti. Imereti. Kutaisi, yes. I agree with Diana about that. Tbilisi is, uh, in, I think still is, you know, the, the still, yes. beautiful center of whole Caucasus, you know, where is there's Armenia, there's Azerbaijan, there's Russia, there's Persia, and then west of us is Turkey. So you want it or not, you know, it still has that dot especially in Tbilisi. And these oh, urban like songs, fusion, right? yeah, these urban songs were like this, uh, to me, like, um, I can't say the whole Caucasian, but definitely, I think Ru Russia has also influenced a little bit with romances. And I think the gypsies influenced Russians with romances. <laughs> and then that worked really well. And then suddenly, uh, Georgians, we love that too. I mean, and, and Diana and her sister, I'll tell you. Uh, one of the best that I've heard uh, doing actually uh, city songs to me. And I'm not saying that because I love yeah, them, yeah. no. 
because it's really like uh, you can sit down and absolutely completely get lost with there. When I came to this country, the cultural difference was huge, you know, huge, and that, that was a big impact. And I didn't want to be that way because I knew that I respected, uh, and I still do, like always have other people's cultures. I do. It's not just Georgian music I listen to. God forbid, no. But uh, what I, Canada gave me uh, was that I saw Paco de Lucia three times, man. That's my best ever. Uh, uh, that I would never ever dream to see Paco de Lucia, my best guitar player on planet, even still today. I saw him three times here today um, uh, in Canada. Also, uh, we went to uh, many symposiums and festivals and I met so many people, and I've heard so many other music that they brought in. Just fabulous. That way, I think Canada, I have to uh, thank Canada, like, till I'm, like, the end of my days, I was saying that. Because as, as a lover of music, Canada completely, not open one door, but all the doors that you can imagine uh, that exists with music. I love the city, there's so much multiculturalism here, and I think this really helped to see differently, yeah, to, to, to put, put ourselves or, 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 or the culture yep. uh, into a special status. Canada did more because it's, like, it's so multicultural, like you said that it, it brought everybody's food, drinks, and, and, and culture here. So, yeah, I'm very thankful and grateful. I really am, because it helped me as a person uh, to live better, you know, like with myself, first of all. Georgia was one of the first countries to become Christianized uh, in the fourth century. And the chanting tradition in the church for all these countries that turn Christian at that time was monophonic, meaning it was one voice. There weren't polyphonic, there weren't multiple voices going on. By the ninth century in documents, it was written specifically, they could read it specifically, that there were three distinct parts in Georgian polyphony. So they assume, in Georgian chanting that is, so they assume that this was an influence from an indigenous polyphonic tradition. We have a few uh, kind of hats over there, and one comes from Svaneti, it's a uh, northwestern mountains, a hat with, um, you know, a little cross on top, and the, and the fairy one, that's actually made from a, a sheepskin. I've seen my grandpa make that, and also something like that he would make, and also something that you could cover your oh, yeah, uh, yeah. ankles uh, yeah. in, uh, in a winter. And again, you know, that's because, um, I guess um, 
Georgian people were self-sufficient, so they didn't have a lot of garbage to throw, throw away or when, when they would uh, kill animals to eat. So they used everything and the skin or guts. My parents were uh, farmers and each time I went to visit them, uh, my grandmother would uh, uh, do the, the sheep hair for days and then she would make pillows and then she would make uh, covers for it. I have a degree originally in economics. I threw it away, I went into music because I think having music grounds us all. It connects us. And a traditional music like Georgian music is so powerful that way because it's not too hard to sing a song. And then when you sing that song, your body's vibrating, the person beside you is singing it as well. And then you're connected. And that you're singing this song that is thousands of years old, connects you to the thousands of people who've been singing it for thousands of years. And then, you know, then I, I can know that my children have something, something that that's more solid than the devices that yeah. are propagating our lives today. So uh, for yeah, me, don't say that. <laughs> for yeah. me, you know, the point is really just to do music and to keep sharing music. Yeah. I don't know what the outcome yeah. of that is, except that it's going to offer an alternative and a more real, a real experience. You know, I would like to spread as much as possible, uh, you know, Georgian uh, polyphonic folklore church, uh, you know, songs. I think they're beautiful. They bring some spiritual, the unity. Even if I introduce Georgian music to one person who never heard Georgian music before here in Canada, I will be very, very happy because I put little, little smallest contribution mm -hmm. to popularization of Georgian music. This is one of my goals. And second one, of course, as Vaj said, that for me, I want my kids to continue this family tradition, tradition, and not only family tradition, our country, my roots and their roots too. Mm -hmm. And I would like them to just pass it through generations and teach their children or yes, and just visit oh, Georgia often Who and knows? learn more. For, yes, or friends, Who yes, knows? yes, yes, yes. What I want to leave behind is um, uh, something that um, Someone can remember me, you know, I think that's the most that everybody wants uh, with music. I don't think I have ever looked uh, me personally to be praised, you know, I, I don't think that ever was my thing. I don't think it ever will be because it makes me really uncomfortable. What 
I want to live is that uh, when I go, when my time will come, my friends and my son, zzz, two of them, can, um, you know, make a toast that they had a father who, who could, you know, sing Georgian folk music and I... I will leave my job, I will, for that two, three weeks, absolutely leave behind and just go and do this and probably won't make no money, but that doesn't really matter. You know, it's nice to make money, but if there's no money, we, I would still do it absolutely, uh, very happily. Gaumar Jones! Gaumar Jones! Ah!